All right, so in this case, guys, we're working on lesson 5.13, which is a quadratic formula. Uh, in this case, we are going to be using a formula to solve for x intercepts. So I do want to go ahead and get started with this question here, which talks about what are perfect squares. Now, whenever we're talking about perfect squares, guys, we're actually talking about the product of a number multiplied by itself. by itself <clears throat> all right so examples in this case of perfect squares would be one because one times one is one it is also going to be four because two times two is four um it's going to be nine because nine times nine is uh or three times three is nine then four times four is 16 five times five is 25 six times six is 36 seven times seven is 49 8 times 8, <clears throat> 64, and then I'm just going to go ahead and continue writing the rest. So 81, then 100, then 121, 144, 169, 196, and 225. I'm going to go ahead and actually stop here. So that's, that's for 15, but it does keep on going, guys. It keeps on going. Now, <clears throat> I am focused here with perfect squares because since we're working with the quadratic formula, in the quadratic formula, we do have a square root. So there's going to be times where the numbers inside the square root can actually be simplified by, um, in this case, basically um, square rooting a perfect square that's going to be multiplied with that number. So let's go ahead and start off here. This is 148. And in this case, guys, I want to go ahead and actually simplify this equation here, this expression of 148. Now, since I want to go ahead and simplify, I'm actually going to go ahead and divide 148 by my perfect squares. Once again, my perfect squares are the list that I have up here. So in this case, I'm actually going to go ahead and skip the 1 because if I divide anything by a 1, it's still going to be that same number. So I'm actually going to go ahead and do 148 divided by a 4. And that actually works perfectly because it does give me a whole number. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as uh, the square root of 4 times 37. All right. Now, in this case, guys, out of those two numbers, the number that is a perfect square is the 4. So then if I take the square root of 4, and I'm going to go ahead and write it here, square root of 4, it's actually going to be a 2. So the simplified version of 148, the square root of 148 is actually 2 times the square root of 37. Once again, this 2 right here is the square root, was the square root of uh, square root of 4, was the answer of square root of 4. All right, so that would be my answer there. So let's go ahead and move on to this next one, and this next one is 153. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing as I did with the previous example, where I'm going to go ahead and divide this number by my perfect squares. Once again, the number I'm going to go ahead and start with here is a 4. Now, in this case, guys, if you take a look here, um, 153 divided by 4 gives me a decimal, so that one doesn't work. I want a whole number as my answer. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to divide them by 9. And 9 in this case, guys, is actually the one that works for us. So I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this. So it's the square root of 9 times a 17. In this case, if I do the square root of 9 on the bottom, I get 3. So my simplified version is 3 square root of 17. All right. Now let's go ahead and move on to this next one, guys. 325, 325. And we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. So you're going to go ahead and get 325 and divide it by 4. It gives me a decimal. It doesn't work. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is 9. Decimal doesn't work. Now let's go ahead and do 16. And in this case, it also doesn't work. So I'm going to go ahead and move on to 25. And in this case, that one does work. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. So it's the square root of 25 times 13. <clears throat> now, once again, the perfect square here is the 25. So if I take the square root of 25, we get 5. So our answer here is 5 square root of 13. Now, I want to go ahead and move on now to this other example. So that was talking about the square roots in this case. Now, I want to go ahead and focus on, in this case, this rational expression. Now, I haven't yet showed you guys the quadratic formula, but in the quadratic formula, it's also the fraction. Um, so in this case, when you have fractions, you do want to go ahead and get the most, the simplest form of that expression. 
and in order to do that you do have to see if you can divide anything or any number by all the numbers that we have available so in this case i actually want to go ahead and check if there's a number that divides into the three the six and the twelve and in this case, guys, the answer is yes. I could actually divide all of them by a 3. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. And my answer in this case, if I simplify this out, is going to be 3 divided by 3 is a 1 minus a 2x over 4. And that would be my simplified form. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started on our first example. Well, before the first example, let me go ahead and give you the formula. And go ahead and write this down. In this case, the quadratic formula is going to be this here. And the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And it is based off from a quadratic um, equation in this case, which is the one on top. So we need to identify our a, b, and c values and do basic substitution in our equation here to solve for x. So go ahead and write that down, guys. And let's go ahead and get started with example one. So in this case, guys, example one, it says solve 3x squared plus 6x equals 10. Now, before I actually use the formula here, I do need to make sure my equation is equal to zero. In this case, it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and subtract 10 to both sides. And that's going to give me a 3x squared plus a 6x minus 10 equals zero. So from here, guys, I'm actually going to go ahead and move on to identifying our A, B, and C values. So I want to go ahead and identify A, B, and C. A in this case, guys, is a 3. It's a number in front of the X squared. Uh, B is a number in front of the X, which is 6. And 10, or C in this case, is a constant, the number that's by itself, which is a negative 10. So let's go ahead and write our equation down. And I have X equals <clears throat> negative B plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. All right, so basic substitution, wherever we see an a, we'll replace it with a 3. Wherever we see a b, we'll replace it with a 6. And wherever we see a c, we'll replace it with a negative 10. So let's go ahead and do that. We have x equals uh, negative it does call for a negative originally so it's negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times a times c and all of this is going to be over a 2 over 3 2 times 3 so let's go ahead and work this out. Now, in this case, guys, all this expression right here, the 6 squared minus a 4 times 3 times a negative 10, you could actually input all of that into the, the uh, calculator here. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and do. So I do put parentheses because sometimes some values are negative, so we need to make sure that those are included in parentheses. So I have a 6 squared. <clears throat> We're going to go ahead and do 6 squared. Squared minus 4 times a 3 times a negative 10 and in this case guys our answer there would be 156 so i have x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 156 over 2 times 3 is 6. now once we get to this point guys we're not done yet because we still need to check inside of the square root if this number here the 156 could be divided by a perfect square so here, I just want to go ahead and add a little arrow here. We want to go ahead and check if divisible by perfect square. Okay. So in this case, in the calculator, if you see on my right, I have 156. And I'm going to go ahead and start dividing first by a 4. Thankfully for us, guys, this actually does work. We have 4 times 39 gives us 156. So if I do 4 times 39, this gives us 156. So I'm actually going to go ahead and rewrite that. I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that. So that's going to become x equals negative 6 plus or minus the square root of 4 times 39. And if you recall from the pre-examples that we had here, we need to simplify this here, the square root. So in this case, the question for you is, what is the square root of 4? And square root of 4 is a 2. 
So instead of having the square root of 4 inside or the 4 inside, it's now going to be on the outside. But we're going to have it as a 2 because square root of 4 is 2. And inside the square root, we're left with the 39. <clears throat> so all of this is over 6. Now we're almost done here, guys, because now you want to go ahead and check if we can simplify. So you want to go ahead and see uh, if I can simplify uh, the negative 6, the 2, and the 6. So is there a number that could divide into both of into all three of these? And the answer is yes, because I could actually divide all of them by a 2. So we could divide them all by a 2. And our final answer in this case would be x equals negative 6 divided by a 2. Once again, if we don't know, we'll divide it here. Is negative 3. Plus or minus 2 divided by 2 is a 1 times the square root of 39. Notice in this case, guys, I didn't include the 1 of 2 divided by 2 because this is multiplying. So it doesn't make a difference if I add it there. Uh, over the 3. And that would be my answer. All right. That would be my answer. So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. And here is the next one. And in this case, we want to go ahead and solve for negative uh, 7x plus a 1 minus a 10x squared equals 0. Uh, in this case, guys, thankfully for us, the equation is already equal to 0, so I don't have to move anything to the other side. Now I want to go ahead and move on to identifying our a, b, and c values. So let's go ahead and identify a, b, and c. <clears throat> now, a in this case, guys, is the number that's in front of the x squared, so that's actually negative 10, which is this one. Now, b in this case is the number in front of the x, which is a negative 7. And then c is our constant, which is 1. So let's go ahead and write the equation here. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So once again, wherever I send a, I'll substitute it for the negative 10. Wherever I see a b, I'll substitute it for the negative 7. And wherever we see a c, we'll substitute it for the 1. So we have x equals negative. Now notice in this case, guys, our b initially does have a negative. And the b value up here is also negative. So you're actually going to be seeing double negatives there. So it's a negative times a negative 7 plus or minus the square root of, in this case, b squared, which is negative 7 squared minus 4 times a, which is a negative 10, times c, which is a 1. And all of this is over 2 times a negative 10. All right. Once again, guys, here we could do this part step by step what's inside the square root or i could simply input it in the calculator and that's what i'm gonna go ahead and do so parentheses negative 7 squared minus a 4 times negative 10 times a 1 and in this case guys our answer there would be 89 so i have x equals in the square root it's going to be 89 but in this case guys negative times negative is actually going to give us a positive so that's actually going to be a positive 7 in front plus or minus the square root of 89. And all of this is going to be over negative 20. Now, next step in this case, guys, is we want to go ahead and check for square roots or check for perfect squares. Check um, if divisible by perfect squares. divisible by perfect squares. So in this case, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and do 89 divided by 9. Once again, we're starting off actually by 4. Divided by 4, and it gives me a decimal, so that doesn't work. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is 89 divided by 9. Doesn't work. 89 divided by uh, 16. Doesn't work. 89 divided by uh, 25. Doesn't work either. 89 divided by uh, 36 won't work. 89 divided by uh, 49 doesn't work either. And in this case, guys, if I keep on going, it's actually not going to be working. So there's no perfect square in 89. So this is actually our final answer. <clears throat> that is our final answer. All right. Now let's go ahead and move on to the last one here. 
And here's the last one. Now, in this case, guys, once again, we want to go ahead and solve for a negative 6 plus uh, 3x minus 9x squared minus equals a negative 16. Now, first thing you want to go ahead and check with these equations, guys, once again, is you want to go ahead and make sure the equation here is equal to 0. Um, so I'm actually going to end up moving this one to the other side. So I'm going to go ahead and actually add 16, and I'm going to go ahead and combine it with this like term, which is a negative 6. So this is plus 16. <coughs> So then that's going to become negative 6 plus 16 is 10, plus a 3x minus 9, x squared equals 0. All right. Now, from there, let's go ahead and identify a, b, and c. So a in this case, guys, represents the number in front of the x squared, which is negative 9. b is the number in front of the x, which is 3, and c is 10. All right, so now let's go ahead and substitute it into our formula. So I have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So basic substitution here, x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of a 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is negative 9, times c, which is 10, all over 2a, which is negative 9. Now, once again, I'm going to go ahead and input this, what I highlight in yellow, into the equation. Once again, without the square root, so it's parentheses 3 squared minus 4 times a negative 9 times a 10. And in this case, that's going to give us 369. So x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 369. And in this case, guys, once again, all of this is going to be over negative 18. I want to go ahead and now check. Once again, we want to go ahead and do our check here. So our check. I'm going to go ahead and check it there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and divide 369 by a 4 just to check if it works first with that one and it doesn't so let's go ahead and move on to 369 divided by 9 and in this case it does work so let's go ahead and rewrite it on the bottom so we have x equals negative 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 times 41. now in this case guys the number that's a perfect square here is a 9 so if i take the square root of 9 it gives us 3. so this is x equals negative 3 plus or minus 3, square root of 41, over a negative 18. <clears throat> so final step here, guys, is to check if we can simplify the negative 3, the 3, and the negative 8. And thankfully for us, they actually all divide by a 3. So I'm going to go ahead and divide all of them by a 3, which is going to express it in the simplest form here. So we have x equals negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 41 over a negative 6. And that there, guys, would be our answer. So you do have a practice problem in this case, and this would be 